Greetings, Pokemon fans, and welcome back to JD's Nerdiverse. Today, we are going to go ahead and take a journey through Crystal with Apom. Apom is known as the Longtail Pokemon. It's a normal type with a fast level up rate. Let's go and watch this first encounter with a Sentret. We named our Pokemon Rafiki. Rafiki is from Lion King, if you've never watched it. If you go ahead and watch it, it's the animated version's better. And now we're going to go and face our rival. Our rival is going to come out, and his name is Triple Question Mark. He's going to throw out a Chikorita at us. We chose Chikorita because there's not really a great option. Normal type Pokemon have a huge advantage in this game, and Chikorita is the most bulky of the three starters, so I thought that'd be the best option there. We beat our rival, and now we're going to go ahead and progress and face these uh, trainers along the path to the next city. So let's go ahead and go over that real quick, but we're going to talk about our stats while we're doing those battles, because they're pretty much obsolete. HP is 55, attack is 70, defense is 55, special attack is 40, special defense 55, and speed is 85 for a grand total of 360. Sp speed and attack are good, which is what... You know, you're going to do well in most playthroughs with that. Special attack, though, really, really kills us in this. And you'll see why here in a second. So, our level up move set is Scratch is 40, 100% accurate. It's 60 with Stab. Tail Whip, it lowers the office's defense. Sand attack lowers accuracy. Baton pass is not useful at all in a, in a solo playthrough. Fury Swipes is a stab move that I don't like using because look at the accuracy on that. It's 80 base power, but it is a 27 with Stab move per swipe. So, not the worst move, but it's bad accuracy. And Swift is 60 base power and 100% accurate. With Stab, it's 90. Actually, it doesn't miss at all. It skips through actually checks. It just can't hit Ghost. Screech and Agility are the last two moves. And Screech doesn't make sense because if we want to lower the opposite of the defense, we can just use Tail Whip. And Agility ups our speed, which we don't need to up that because we're already pretty fast. So yeah, the level up move set's not very good. We could not beat the game with this. Oh, well, we could. It'd be very difficult, though. But we're going to go over our very broad team move set. So I'm going to pause it for a second because it's very broad. I want to go over everything. And Dynamic Punch is 100% ac 100 base power, 50% accurate. That's the first move we can get. This move really only has any uh, any usage, really, except in, like, one battle. There's no utility for it consistently, because it's not a consistent move. But it is good for that boom or bust you have for, like, one battle at the end of the game. Headbutt is a 70 base power move, 100% accurate. With Stab, it's 105. Curse, I'm going to go ahead and let this play a little bit. Curse, Toxic, Zap Cannon, Rock Smash, we're not going to use. Hidden Power... We decided to go with Hidden Power Flying with this Pokemon to counter our Fighting type weakness. So that's 70 base power and we can boost that with beating Faulkner's Gym and getting the Sharp Beak. So that'll boost it up a little bit, make it a little more powerful. But it's really good against Flying type Pokemon. It does, however, lower our attack stat. So that's something we had to, had to figure out and we might have to figure out something different for the Optimized playthrough. You'll see that next week. Sunny Day, Snore, Protect, Endure, Frustration, Iron Tail, Thunder. All those moves will not be used in this playthrough. Return is the move bar barely see it at the bottom. <laughs> uh, return is a great move for this Pokemon. It's a great move in general. It's 102 base power whenever you max out your friendship. But with this Pokemon being normal type, this turns into a 153 base power move. It is extremely powerful and extremely useful th for this Pokemon. And then when you beat Whitney's Gym, you get another 10% boost in normal move, normal attacking moves. And then you can get the Pink Bow. This this move just becomes very OP. Very early in the game. This is why normal type have such a huge advantage in this game because you get headbutt and then return two really good. Actually, swift as well is actually not a bad move to have either. And you get that very early in the game. Shadow Ball is actually a move we don't use in this playthrough, but I, cause I didn't think we could use it. I didn't do my research well enough, I guess. Uh, 80 base power, 100% accurate. Mud Slap actually makes it so the second rival battle is possible. So the second rival comes out usually with a uh, Haunter. And unless you have anything that does anything other than the normal move, you can't hit it. And Mud Slap acts as our saving grace and lets us be able to hit that Pokemon. Double Team, uh, not going to use. Ice Punch, Thunder Punch, and Fury or uh, Fire Punch are all 75 base power, harms than accurate. If this Pokemon had a better special, these moves would be a lot, have a lot more utility. But the special is garbage and needs to go off special stat, not, a, not physical attack stat. And it kind of irritates me, but it is what it is. But you have Ice, Electric, and Fire covered. We will help hold some items that will boost us up a little bit. Those moves are uh, are very good. Swagger, Sleep Talk, won't use Swift. We will use this TM rather than waiting level 27 to get Swift. We'll use it probably around like level 17 or 18. It's a little, about 10 levels sooner. Defense Curl, Dream Eater, Detect, Rest, Attract, Thief, Fury Cutter, Nightmare, Cut, and Strength we will not be using this play. So we could have used Fury Cutter rather than a Mud Slap, but those Pokemon are weak to uh, ground moves, so that's the route we're going to go. So we have a lot of moves, but we're not going to use a lot of moves because it just doesn't make sense to use a bunch of these. 
But we're gonna go ahead and go with Faulkner's gym, and we just did the Super Sim, and now we're gonna face Faulkner. He's gonna come out with a Pidgey and a Pidgeotto, and Pidgey's gonna come out. We're gonna go for Scratch. Scratch is a two shot. It misses its tackle. Good. So now we're at we're at level 14, by the way, and we're almost 10 minutes into this playthrough. Scratch will be a two shot after we drop its defense. Very good. We beat Faulkner, and we get the Zephyr Badge. We're gonna move right on to the next part of the game, which is Union Cave. And the reason why I'm showing this is I don't always show this, but Lately, I've been showing this because I avoid those two battles. Those two Pokemon or trainers have two gr uh, grounds. Like they have Onyx, they have Geodude, and we're just not gonna do a lot of damage against them. So I was like, you know what? Let's just skip those battles. We'll fight the rest of them in here, and we're not we're not like aching for like experience right now. We're pretty high level. We, like I said, we level up pretty fast. So we're already level 17, and then I said, like I said, we're about 10 levels sooner than we would usually get Swift via level up. We went and got Swift right now. So we're gonna use Max Repel. And we should add Swift. Are we going to add Swift? Nope, we're not going to. We're going to stick with Scratch until at least we get out of this tunnel. Scratch is a one-shot on the Vulpix. Very good. And now we're going to go out of here. We're going to fight Hiker Anthony. I sped it up a little bit. If you are seeing it, it is faster. It's usually four times speed. But now I sped this up to get through and just talk a little bit about these battles. So look how Scratch is doing against Geodude. Now Mudslap is doing a little bit better. But, I mean, Scratch didn't do well at all. But now Scratch can do really well against Machop. It's a two-shot. Knock him out. And we finish off Hiker Anthony, and we're going to move right on to Bugsy's Gym. We did the Slowpoke well. I'm not going to show that. It's very obsolete battles. So we just did the Super Sim again, and now we're going to go ahead and face Bugsy. Bugsy is the Bug-type trainer, and he's going to come out with, I think it's first a Metapod. A Metapod comes out, and we're going to go for Swift. Swift is not a one-shot. Metapod's pretty bulky. It is kind of odd that Kakuna goes down to one-shot where Metapod didn't, but no big deal. Not the end of the world. We're going to go for Tail Whip. And we're going to go for Swift, and Swift's going to be a two-shot. His Fury Cutter gets going, but we don't let it get going enough that it actually uh, becomes like a threat to us. So after that battle, we're going to move right on to our rival. Our rival battle is going to be pretty simple. We have something for Ghastly. We have Mud Slap. Is it a one-shot? It is a one-shot. we got a critical hit on it, so we knock him out right away. Zubat should be a one-shot with Swift. Very good. Now we move on to Bayleaf, where we don't have a weakness to Bayleaf. It's pretty bulky, but we get a critical and don't knock it out. But we do knock it out in two hits, and we beat our rival and move right on to the Bug Forest. Now in the Bug Forest, a couple things happen here, but the main thing that happens is we do pick up this potion. We pick up an Ether later, but we also pick up this move from this guy with the green hair, which is Headbutt. Headbutt is already went over the 70 base power, 105 with Stab. It's an improvement over Swift. So it does give us a little, slightly more powerful move, but what it does over Swift is it can make the opposition flinch, which is very useful. And I don't think we use that to its full effect here. We're going to see here in a little bit our battle with Whitney. But right here, we're going to grab this Ether just so we can replenish power points as needed. And we're going to move right on to Whitney. Goldenrod City is a place where you run a lot of errands, so I think that's just some boring stuff. We do have a couple battles we have to fight in the underground to get our hair cut and get our friendship raised. For the most part, the stuff is just errands. Gotta go talk to the girl, get a squirt gun, things like that. Our squirt bottle. And now we're gonna face Whitney. And Whitney's gonna come out with two Pokemon. It doesn't make sense that the third gym trainer has less Pokemon than the second gym trainer. Every other Pokemon game I've ever played, they've always progressed. But with Clefairy, we'll go down to two Swifts. And this is where we made a little bit of a mistake. Could've got bad. But we could've used Headbutt, and we might have made a uh, Miltake flinch. And that would've been much more useful than using Swift. But we still get the knockout regardless. And we're going to face Sudowoodoo. Sudowoodoo is a rock tree thing. And we're going to go ahead. We got nothing great against it. Our low special means Ice Punch isn't as effective as we'd like it to be. We do get a freeze, which is nice. But like I said, we don't have anything great against Sudowoodoo. But we're going to knock it out. It's going to take one more hit to knock it out. Very good. We beat Sudowoodoo, the tree rock. And we're going to not learn Swift again. We just unlearned it for a reason. And we're going to move right on to Lake of Rage. Lake of Rage is where you can pick up the PM's hidden power. We went with Hidden Power Flying because we have to face fighting type Pokemon. And at the time, we thought that was the best one to use. So it was probably a better one. So now we're with the, the uh, Komodo Girls. Now, I think the Komodo Girls is a time that I'd like to take. It's like right smack dab in the middle of the video, kind of. Well, maybe like a third of the way. Where we talk about uh, the channel and how we're doing. So in the last like week, we've gained a lot of subscribers. I'm up over 450 subscribers. I like to keep that going. And a lot of my subscribe or watchers aren't subscribers. So if you're watching this, please give that like like button and subscribe button a click. You can hit the notification bell. You get notified when I post videos. I post at least twice a week. So a prediction video followed by a playthrough. And 
if you can, and I know it's asking a lot, just leave a comment or like it or both. It really helps YouTube algorithm. I call it, uh, you know, jumpstarting the algorithm by liking, commenting, viewing, things like that. But it gets other people watching this video. And we're doing very well when it comes to progressing with that as of this moment. So if you can, it really means a lot to me. Other than that, enjoy the rest of the video. And we're going to go right on to our third rival battle. Third rival is an easy rival. Because we don't have to worry, we don't have to worry about only having a really low base that base move basically to hit Haunter. We can two shot Haunter with hidden power or, you know, ice punch or whatever. Magnemite comes out. We're going to go for a fire punch. going to knock him out one go. It's really weak to fire. Like having fire punch with a normal type Pokemon, it really does counter that steel, steel problem. Hidden power flying is a one shot on Zubat. And then Bayleaf comes out. Fire punch is a two shot. Razorleaf does do a decent amount of damage, but we get the win over our rival, and we're going to fall right out of there into Morty's lap, and we're going to face Morty. Morty is the ghost poison trainer. He uh going to come out with a Ghastly, a Haunter, a Gengar, and then another Haunter. Ghastly goes, well, Ghastly go down to one shot. I think it will. Hidden power fighting, or I got hidden power flying, I'm sorry. Knockout, hidden power flying, knockout on the Haunter. Is it a knockout on the Gengar? I don't think it is, but let's, let's find out. Yep, it's a one shot. We got a critical hit. Very good. And then Haunter... It's a one shot again. So very good. Very excellent run of Morty right there. So now we're going to move right on to Chucky Boy's gym. Chucky Boy is a fighting type gym leader. He only has two Pokemon again. Like you go from two with the third gym leader to four with the fourth. And now we're down to two again. There are two good Pokemon. Primeape and Poliwrath are pretty good. But now we're going to go face Chucky Boy. And Chuck, he can be a big problem because if he can hit one of these dynamic punches, it's going to be super effective because we are weak to fighting type. However... We are not going to have that problem with the Primate. We're going to one-shot with Hidden Power Flying. And then Polyrath will be a two-shot. Now, the reason why Hidden Power Flying is, is so much more powerful is because we did pick up the Sharp Beak. Sharp Beak does add a 10% boost. And when we beat Falconer, it added a 10% boost there as well to uh, Flying-type Pokemon. Or Flying-type moves, I should say. So we beat... We uh, go ahead and talk to Amphrissy Flashes us, and now we're going to face Jasmine. Jasmine is going to come out with... A Magnemite, we have hidden, we have Fire Punch, and we are holding the Charcoal, so it's a one-shot on the Magnemite, the second Magnemite's a one-shot as well. I do not believe that Steelix is a one-shot. No, it'll be multiple shot, and this could get scary, but we knock it out. We would have been just under half if it hit us one more time. And with that being said, we're going to move right on to Lake of Rage, where we're going to face Gyarados. Gyarados is going to be coming out, and he's not going to be super hard, we're going to go for return. It's going to be a two-shot bite, doesn't do anything to us. It kind of like tickles us a little bit, and we're going to go ahead and talk to this guy right here. He's kind of a weirdo. Uh, he's got a cape on. I think he's cosplaying. It is around Halloween, so maybe he's trick-or-treating. But he's going to fly away, and we're going to face Price after we beat the Rocket Plotline in Mahogany Town. Price is going to come out, and we don't really have anything crazy to deal with Price right now. Return's going to one-shot the Seal. Is the Return going to one-shot the Dugong? It is going to one-shot the Dugong. So the last Pokemon is Poliswine. We're going to go for Fire Punch. It's going to be a two-shot. The only thing we don't want there is a Blizzard where it can freeze us. But we beat Price, and we move right on to our fourth rival battle where he's going to come out with a Golbat. And we have Hidden Power, or I'm sorry, Ice Punch, which will two-shot. Oh, I can't believe that's not a one-shot, but it's a two-shot on the Golbat. Very good. Magnemite's going to come out. We're going to go for Fire Punch. It's going to one-shot the Magnemite. Very good. And we're not going to learn Agility. We don't need to. We're already fast enough. And Haunter's going to come out. We're going to go for Hidden Power Flying. Hidden Power Flying will one-shot the Haunter. Very good. Sneasel comes out. We're going to go for Return. It's going to be a one-shot in the Sneasel. And that leaves one more Pokemon, which is Meganium. Hot Fire Punch will be a one-shot with a critical hit. So we beat our rival pretty handily there. And with our rival beat, we finish up the Rocket Plotline and go face Claire. Claire is a Dragon Gym Leader, and we have a huge advantage over Cliff. Dragonair comes out. We're going to go for Ice Punch. I always want to say Hidden Power Ice, because we use that in so many playthroughs, but Ice Punch is what we use here. It's actually more powerful than Hidden Power Ice, so I don't know why I don't I don't want to say Ice Punch all the time. But Ice Punch one-shots all three of the Dragonairs. Kingdra comes out. We're going to go for Return. It's not a one-shot. It's probably going to heal. Yep, getting the healing loop with Hyper Potion. But a Return will knock it out. We take no damage against Claire at all. We literally just obliterate her. And we're going to go ahead and move right on to our final rival battle. I think it's rival number five. And he's going to come out, and, and right before the Elite Four, he's going to come out with Sneasel Pleasel. We're going to go for a Return. It's a one-shot on Sneasel. Golbat's going to come out. We probably could go for a Return on Golbat. It's a very powerful move. It's probably a little more powerful than Ice Punch. So there we go. Get the knockout. We level up. 
Magneton comes out, hidden power, or um, fire punch, I'm sorry. Go for fire punch, and then Haunter comes out, hidden power flying. Bada bing, bada boom, knock him out. And then Kadabra comes out in his return, and we get to knock out the Kadabra. So that wins us the battle. Nope, we got one more, I'm sorry, Magganium. Magganium comes out, we get hit with fire punch, and we'll hit it twice with fire punch and knock it out. We get poison, not a big deal. We got plenty of health to get us to the uh, you know Pokemon Center. And now we're going to face the Elite Four. The Elite Four, we're, first thing I'm going to do is go over our level real quick. Level 54, our health is 147, so not the greatest. Don't have a lot of health. But we're going to go ahead and go over our moves. So we have the Never Melt Ice attached. So this is going to be very useful against a lot of members early in the Elite Four. But we have Ice Punch, we have Hidden Power, Fire Punch, and Return. So that'll cover most things. And we have Thunder Punch for whenever we want to go have like an electric move. So we have that in our back pocket in case we need to use it. And then our stats of this Pokemon are as follows, attack 116, defense is 95, special attack is 87, special defense is 103, speed is 130. When we get our, when we enter the battles, it gets a little bit more boosted, but those are our stats going into the Elite Four. So here's our first encounter with Will. Will is a psychic trainer. He leads out with a Zatu. This is why we have Nevermelt Ice equipped. Ice Punch will one-shot one the Zatu. Very good. Jinx will come out and return should one shot the Jinx. She's very frail and we're, we have a very powerful physical move. Executor comes out. We're going to go for Hidden Power Ice again. It's not a one shot. Psychic, as long as he doesn't go for Hypnosis, I'm good with that. Slowbro comes out and this is where we could have added, hit, added a Thunder Punch because he is water type, but we still get the knockout regardless. And then Zatu comes out. The last Zatu, we, want, we do not one shot it. I'm sorry. But we get a two shot on it. It goes for a max potion. So we're in a healing loop. And we almost one-shotted it there again, but, you know, it is what it is. We beat Will, and we move right on to Koga. Now, we heal up and everything and go for Koga. Koga, we kept Fire Punch mainly for Koga. So, Fire Punch is, is left for this Pokemon, because he has one Pokemon where... Uh, wow, I can't believe Aria just survived that, but oh well. He has one Pokemon where Fire Punch is really necessary to beat him. So, we're going to go for... Come on. Uh, Fire Punch. We could have gone for Hidden Power Flying there, too. Any of those three moves, any of those four moves have done well against it. Now, Fortress is the one we kept it for. It's four times weak to fire. It's very bulky, so I, I just wanted to get through that without having too many issues. Return will be a one-shot on the Muck. So that leaves one Pokemon left, and that is Crobat. We're going to go for Return. Is it a one-shot? It is not. It just ups its evasion, but there's a four store. So now we can one-shot it one more time. It's a two-shot. So Toko, we beat Koga pretty handily. Move right on to the problem, which is Bruno. Bruno... We actually do pretty good against Bruno, except for one Pokemon. And this Pokemon has an 80 base or 80% 80 accurate move that it continues to just hit all the time. So Hidden Power Flying will one-shot all of his Pokemon. We do get hit by Mock Punch because it's a priority move with Hitmonchan. So this is one of the problems. We have a little bit of damage done. But we do one-shot it. Now, here is the issue. Machamp, we do not have enough to one-shot the Machamp. And we do not have enough bulk to tank a cross-shot. So we have to try this again. And if we had more health, we might be able to win this. We just don't have a lot of health for this Pokemon. It's not one of its best stats. So we have full health going into going into the uh, Hitmonchan. And Hitmonchan goes for Mach Punch, and it does a decent amount of damage. Now, 117 is not horrible on on, on uh, our, our hit points, but we don't one-shot the Machamp. And we have everything equipped. There's nothing we can do other than just wait for RNG. So I thought, maybe I go for Return. Maybe Return is just a little bit more powerful. So maybe Return will be the better move here. We add a return. We are equipped with the pink bow. We are also um, we also beat a gym that makes it better. So are we going to one shot the Machamp? We are not, but we just got to wait. Well, it's it's probably going to come down to RNG. It's going to come down to Machamp not hitting a cross shot, and that's the only way we're going to beat this. So we're going to rely a little bit on an eighty percent accurate move not hitting. If it was my move, it, it feels like it's. Moves like 80% accurate feel like 50% accurate to me because they just don't seem to hit as much as they should. So we're going to hit it. Oh, it doesn't hit us. Get some max potion. Not a big deal. We're going first, so it's just wasting a turn. And we get a critical, which would have been great the first time we fought this Pokemon. But we knock it out, and we knock out the Onyx. It's really all about that one move. If Cross Shop hits on a normal Pokemon, nothing really we can do. But we're going to move on to Karen. Karen's going to come out with an Umbreon. We don't have a great move, but Umbreon goes down to two returns, so very good. We did get Sand Attack. That's not fun, but hopefully we can just go through this as fast as we humanly can. We do get paralyzed, so I'm at the point here where I'm like, do I just want to skip through this, or do I want to try to grunt through the battle? So we're going to try to grunt through the battle real quick. 
Gengar comes out. He goes for Curse. We knock it out in one go. So he has two Pokemon left. If we can just hit the Ice Punch, we'll knock out the Murkrow in one go. And now we have one Pokemon left, which is Houndoom. Houndoom, we just got to hit a, a one return. I think one return will knock it out. We just got to hit it, and we don't. Paralyze and Curse combined is very detrimental. And, uh, you know, the stupid Sand Attack didn't help either. But Umbreon goes down two hits. Vileplume comes out. We go for return. It one-shots the Vileplume. Very good. Did not consider that Vileplume may get, go down to one hit from, from that move. Curse happens again. He swears at us, so we're on the clock here. As long as we knock Pokemon out, we'll take no damage. We go for Fire Punch on accident. So I'm like, great. We're going to lose this battle because we clicked the wrong stupid move. It is okay, though. Because as long as we can hit return on Houndoom, it's very frail. We knock it out. So we beat Karen, and we're moving on to the champion. Champion is Lance, the liar with the flyers. He has three dragon Pokemon. And he has three other Pokemon that are flying types. So he has more flying than dragon types. So maybe maybe him and um, Faulkner should switch places. But hidden power flying, we're going to let him set up the rain. What, the, what that does for us is if Charmander, Charizard comes out and we don't knock him out one go, it means his uh, fire moves are nerfed because the rain is out. Ice Punch will one-shot the Dragonite. Very good. Dragonite 2 comes out. Ice Punch will one-shot it. Very good. And now we have Aerodactyl coming out. We're gonna, I think it's going to be a two-shot. It's pretty bulky. Ancient Power doesn't do squat to us. So we knock out the Aerodactyl. And we have Charizard out. And the reason why we wanted the rain out is because so we can one-shot Charizard. In case we didn't, he wouldn't be able to damage us too much. And an Ice Punch on the last Dragonite. It's not a one-shot, but he goes for full restore. So that just shows how low our special is. We re very rarely, with the Never Melt Ice Equip, have any issue with um, Ice Punch or Hidden Power Ice or whatever knocking out a Dragonite. That's how you know our special is very bad. But now we're just trying to get into the Hall of Fame. Click, 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 click. And that's our time right there. Nin 1 hour, 19 minutes, and 3 seconds. Honestly, I think I can do way better in this than the Optimized playthrough. So I'm excited to do that. But before we do that, we have to finish up this game. So we're going to go ahead and go over to and beat all of the Kanto gym leaders and then go face red. I'll see you guys in Kanto. We're on our way to Kanto, but first we have to go ahead and take a little boat ride on the SS Aqua. So we're going to go ahead and get on the SS Aqua. And we're going to get off the SS Aqua. And we're going to head right straight for the first gym, which is Erica. We're doing the Super Sim. I love this trick where we just simulate all these battles. We do actually spend the time. I know I keep saying that, but there's someone out there who's going to say, hey, you're skipping over battles. How'd you do that? It's just an editing trick. We're going to face Erica in Ice Punch or Hidden Power Flying or Fire Punch. All three of those would work just fine. Actually, we don't have Fire Punch anymore. We got rid of that and got Thunderbolt. Because Thunderbolt is 95 base power. It's a lot more powerful. And even though we have a low special, it would work It would work pretty well with this Pokemon for a lot of things. Which is a good segue into the Misty Gym. Misty is a water type gym, so Thunderbolt will be very effective here except for like one Pokemon. But we're going to face Misty. And while we're facing Misty, I do want to say that, uh, well, first, we're going to go and go for Thunderbolt. It's a one-shot in the gold, gold Duck. The next Pokemon is actually resisted because it's ground-type. So Ice Punch will be a two-shot on the Quagshire. Or, uh, nope, three-shot, I'm sorry. Went for Amnesia, up to special. Lapras comes out. Thunderbolt uh, won't, won't knock it out. We're using our special stat, so it's not very powerful. But he does a Parasong, which means we're on the clock to knock out whatever Pokemon's next as fast as humanly possible. Which we do. We beat the Storm, we beat Misty, and we move right along. And I'm not going to talk about these other battles. What we'll talk about is a couple things with the channel. I've already talked about like liking and subscribing and commenting. Those things really help. So if you made it this far, that would be very helpful if you did those things. But what I also want to talk about is the other channel I'm coming out with. So, like I said with this, I've added a bunch of other things to this channel. Now, right now, if you've watched this channel for the last like couple months, I haven't posted other games. Really, that many. What that's done is it throws off the algorithm, because it's not a, a complete type of uh so the way the algorithm works more or less is let's say i post a video about like batman and then star wars and then pokemon and then play some other game like um call of duty on here or something if i play all those things and i throw those things in my thought is i'm reaching out to as many people as possible because there's there's a broad set of topics that people can you know look at the channel and view but that's not how the algorithm works what that does is it shoehorns into getting these videos out to people who watch the Batman, the Star Wars, Pokemon, and Call of Duty, and, and they have to watch all those things. So that's how the algorithm works. So you can't have like a broad... That's why if you ever watch like other channels, like if you ever watch MNJ TV, he has a Pokemon talking about channel and then a Pokemon playing channel. And like, for example, Super Carlin Brothers, they have a talking about channel, they talk about these topics, and then they have a gaming channel. 
So that is why the, those other uh, YouTubers do that. Fan film theory, for example, they have game theory, film theory, food theory, things things like that. It's because if you have too much of one, of multiple topics, it narrow it it doesn't work well to get it to other people. So that is what's been going on with this channel. Is I did not understand that about the algorithm when I first started this channel, and I've played through multiple games. So it, I'm still going to post on this channel, but I will. There is going to be another channel that will be specifically only Pokemon playthroughs. There won't be any uh, prediction videos. They will the predictions, so to speak, and the stats will be gone over at the beginning of the video. But it will be all on one channel, and uh, the the Pokemon parts will be on one channel. And then this one will still run. I think I'm just going to convert this one just to gaming, and hopefully that can uh, salvage the uh, algorithm for the gaming aspect. But for Pokemon specifically, that channel will be Pokemon specifically. So that'll be coming out soon. I actually have one video, uh, uh, two videos uh, played through. One is like fully done, just posted, but not made public. And the other one is not there. The name of that channel is Pokedex Runner, if you wanted to check it out. And it'll be probably be coming out by Saturday. If you want to check it out Saturday, it'll be a playthrough. We're going to go through the Pokedex in order. That is the whole concept of that channel. We've done that a little bit in this channel already. So it's not a different concept. It's just that channel will be only Pokemon. And it's more refined. It's it's years of ex it's a couple years of experience doing this to know like okay what is how is the refinement going to look and this is a lot it's a lot more refined. I don't have the stats and stuff up, but the overlay is much better. It's more it's an active overlay. It's more vibrant. So I hope you enjoy that. And I just finished starting make, making the thumbnails for it. So the thumbnails are really nice. So I hope you guys enjoy that. We are facing Blue, and we are halfway through Blue, and he's going to come out with an Executor. We're going to go for Hidden Power Flying, and it's not going to be a, a one-shot. It's going to be a two-shot. It went for Solar Beam, but it doesn't get a chance to hit us because we knock it out. Arcanine's the next Pokemon. Return is a, a two-shot on the Arcanine. Flamethrower does not do a lot. It does for Full Restore, which doesn't do anything. It's a healing loop. And he goes Full Restore again. For some reason, Arcanine is the one it does the Full Restores on, and I don't know why. But we get the knockout. We beat Blue. And now we're moving on to our big battle against Red. Now, Red, all of his Pokemon are great up until a point. Pikachu's going to go down to a one return. Not a problem. Knock it out. Not a problem at all. Espeon's going to come out. And it's going to come down to not one return, but so close. We do knock it out. So I thought, you know, maybe I didn't. Actually, I know why I reset it there. I did not add a move in. So we want to have Dynamic Punch on our move set to take care of the next Pokemon that comes out, which is going to be Snorlax. So... I realized that after I hit return. Getting hit by Psychic here is not the biggest deal in the world because I thought we wouldn't have any issues with the rest of them. We do have a very effective move against his last two Pokemon. Actually, his last three Pokemon, we have a very effective move. Actually, last four. Snorlax got hit by a Dynamic Punch, and it worked just like a charm. And Venusaur comes out, and we're going to go for Ice Punch on the Venusaur. It doesn't do that much, but we're going to go for Return instead. Return does enough to knock it out in two hits, so we take no damage from Venusaur. Here's the problem. We don't have a high item special... To where Charizard does not go down to one shot with Thunderbolt, and we're down to three health, and we're not gonna knock this thing out in one go, and it's gonna knock us out. So that's the, the problem is these last two Pokemon. We don't have great special or special or special attack or special defense. So the problem we're having with this final battle is we don't have anything that can one shot the Charizard, and we don't have anything that can one shot the Blastoise. So I'm pretty sure we were equipping the right now we're equipping the pink bow to give us a little bit of boost to normal type moves so return is going to be a two shot on the snorlax so we don't have to worry about you know using dynamic punch but here's the other problem we're not replenishing health either hidden power flying will be a two shot very good on the venus or we have full health going into charizard and like i said this is the problem sunny day is up which makes charizard's flamethrower extremely powerful we do survive it but we're not going to have enough health to survive the next Pokemon, which is Blastoise. Thunderbolt, it missed the Blizzard, so that gave us a chance here. If we just got a crit or something, we could have won, but nope, Surf one-shots us, or knocks us out. And now we got to go face this battle again. So it's just about getting a little bit of RNG. The first four Pokemon are not a problem. Espeon's not a big problem. It's a close on a one-shot here. I'd actually probably, I don't know, would I want to go for Reflect? Nah, I don't want to go for Reflect. So we have our health replenished by the leftovers. That's what we're doing right now. So Body Slam hits us, and we're getting low on health, but we're going to go for Dynamic Punch. Maybe with a couple turns, we can replenish enough health to knock it out. 
return is going to be the next move. We're going to knock it out. And so the problem here again is Charizard and the Venusaur. Actually, Venusaur is not the problem. Venusaur sets up Sunny Day, though. That's the problem with Venusaur. Which, I don't think it did Sunny Day. I thought it just took in Sunlight. Yeah, the sun's not out right now. So that's that's kind of... That, okay, so that's what happened last time. It went for Sunny Day. Or, yeah, it went for Sunny Day. And again, we get burned again. And we're going to knock out the Charizard. It's not a problem. But we just don't have a great thing to do against Blastoise. The burn damage is going to do too much. And we just can't knock out the Blastoise. So, we're going to go ahead and go for this one more time. We're at an hour and 48 minutes. Our goal was to get this done in under an hour and 50 minutes. So we're right on the cusp of that. So Espeon comes out. We knock out the Pikachu. He's never a problem. We're going to knock out the Espeon. No, we're not. I think it just went for Reflect. Okay, so it's not the worst thing in the world. So we're going to go for Dynamic Punch. It's going to confuse Snorlax. That's not a problem. That helps us. And hopefully we can just stall out this Reflect until we can get... Now we paralyze. That's good, too. Good. Return. Now, uh, the Reflect is faded, so very good. So now, we can move on like we normally do. Hidden Power Flying. It should be a two-shot. Sunlight is out, and that's where it, it Charizard gets like a really, really high-end move there. Return will be a two-shot. Flamethrower does a decent amount of damage here. We replenish health. Go for Return again. So now, we're on to the Blastoise. Now, we do we... What do we do against Blastoise? Well... Go for Thunderbolt and hope it misses. It did miss a Blizzard. If I can just get a critical hit, Surf does not knock us out. We hold on and we finally beat Red. We beat Red at an hour and 49 minutes and 15 seconds. That is that is good and we could have done a lot better. And I'm going to have to think of a way to do a lot better in the Optimized playthrough. But regardless of that, we do get the win over Red. We do get this done under the time in which we predicted, which is good. But I think we can just do way better in this. This is a normal type Pokemon in Generation 2. And the optimized place, I'm going to, have to do a lot of thinking about this. We're going to have to tr I'm going to try to stick with physical moves. Because using special moves with this Pokemon is just not cutting it. So it's not going to cut it. We will probably still use Thunderbolt in the next playthrough. I think Shadow Ball needs to have a little more utility. It's not special. I'm pretty sure it's physical. So I'm going to double check that before we play through the next playthrough. And there's going to be a couple other things as well. But that is the playthrough. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys like. Hope you guys subscribe. Comment if you made it this far. Say hey, good video, or say hey, you suck. Whatever. I don't care. It does help you. It's just like the phrase, like any 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 news is good news, or any publicity is good publicity. Um, any comments, good comment. Um, I guess in case, unless you you know dislike it, then it kind of counters it. But let me know just think in the comment section down below what you think, what you think we should do with the next playthrough, what's going to make this Pokemon better. Let me know just think. Have a good one, and I'll see you guys next time.